questions. We're here today on a review hearing. Okay, we will go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services and Yolanda Novak is my pregnancy specialist today. Natalie Archer for the mother of Vanessa Williams. Present ready. Jeff Hill on behalf of the alleged father, uh, Nick Langham. Judge, I've had no contact with him and, and have no leads where to find him. I'm present. Ready? Bailey Sapien on behalf of alleged father, Justin Edwards. I also have not had any contact with my client. I do not know how to find him, but I am present and ready. Judge Casey Teresa. On behalf of alleged father, Landon, um, and uh, the last name escaped me, Judge. I have no contact with him and have not been able to get any further contact information at this time. Right, Landon the Turner. Turner. <laughs> I just, it just popped to me. <laughs> and Judge Teresa Ratliff for the alleged father, Miles Watkins, and I'm in the same boat. No contact and no contact information, but I'm ready. Uh, Damn, I'm ready. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, same, I was going to say, same announcements for Respondent Father Bryce and John. Um, I haven't had no contact with him. And uh, Lori Lister, on behalf of the unknown father, Your Honor, I'm President Ready. Stacey Zabala, on behalf of Willow, here and ready. Okay. What do we have news since the court report was filed? Uh, Willow is doing well and growing and crawling and walking or uh, uh, learning to walk. She's pulling up on things and um, trying to reach that milestone. So she's doing well in placement. Miss um, Williams has recently told me that she has moved to Stanet with a new uh, boyfriend and she has told me that her mom was uh, using meth in the apartment and that's why she moved out and that's why she was positive. I did follow up with her cardiologist because she had stated that she was positive because of her heart medicine. I did file the letter from the heart doctor with the court stating that her heart medicine cannot cause her to be positive for meth or marijuana. Um, she recently had a hair follicle screen in June, and it was positive. It was lower than the previous one, but it was still around 6,000. Um, and she was working some services, and then she missed a lot. So she got discharged from substance abuse outpatient services. And she will have to restart that all over again, but not until August, because they, they require them to wait um, 90 days, 60 days, I'm sorry, one of those days. Um, and then she'll also have to restart her parenting classes because she missed so many that she was discharged from them as well. Uh, she has not provided proof of employment or proof of housing. Um, she did attend for rational behavior therapy class online. Um, she has not um, attended any parenting class, or I'm sorry, she did attend some parenting classes, um, but she hadn't, um, hasn't, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm nervous for a second. Um, she has not started therapy, uh, counsel, individual counseling therapy with Jennings at this time. Well, Ms. Archer, uh, is my client in the waiting room by chance? She was not earlier and she is not now. Okay. I, I did send her the link and she has been in communication with me. She did tell me she moved to Stanette to get away from living with her mother. Um, I was curious on uh, that hair follicle being lower. If it's possible, it's from exposure from her mother. Um, I'm not a scientist. So is that in the realm of possibility, Ms. Novak? Or I am not an expert as well, but it is here let me uh let me pull it up uh this screening level <clears throat> that they screen for is 500 um so if it is over 500 then it's confirmed and her levels were 6361 um i'm not a scientist either but i would assume she's using and it's more than just being con being grounded from somebody that is using um, I have spoken with her and I've asked her if she's using and she is just 
admit it, not admitting that she is. She told me that mom stopped using when Willow was born. And then when she told me that she was moving to Stanette, that um, she had lied to me and that mom was using in the apartment and she just didn't want me to know. Um, I just her mother, told, her mother. I just want a clear record. Her mother yeah, was using. Vanessa's mother. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Um, and um, I've at, you know, with her levels, I've asked her right out that, you know, if she was using and she said that she wasn't admitting to using <clears throat> um, because she's not using. So I, sh and I've tried to talk her through it. The first step of, you know, recovery is just acknowledging that she has a problem. And she said that she's not acknowledging it because she's not using. So. And the urine tests were negative, right? Her urine tests were negative, but the UA, um, sorry, the hairs have all been positive, everyone. She has told me that she does plan on starting those uh, parenting and drug abuse classes August 1st, that she's working on getting into counseling, and she's very worried about her getting to her visits, even though she has a vehicle now that she lives in Stinnette. And she, she wanted me to ask if there was any way that the child could come to Stinnette to visit. To be able to do that, we'd have to have a place for them to meet in Stanette. Um, I don't think that we do. I can look into that. Um, but she is supposed to have her own transportation to all visits and appointments. And I know she has her license, but she does not have um, a vehicle of her own. I believe she shares with her boyfriend, perhaps. But I think she's worried about the gas money. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's something the judge would entertain us looking into a place for visits in Stinnett or not. Has she been going to visits? Yes, she has gotten rides. Um, I don't know who she gets rides from to meet here at the St. Francis office. And I have taken her home after visits a couple times as well. So she <laughs> struggles with transportation. Uh, do they appear bonded during the visits? Yes, ma'am. They're sometimes it takes Willow a little bit to warm up to her. Um, but she, she does interact with her. Well, thank you. Ms. Novak. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Mr. Morales, anything to report? No, you are. And Ms. Grant. Nothing new, Your Honor. I would just ask if Ms. Novak has any updates regarding Mr. Turner's location. I have filed a diligent report for all the dads. I do not have their birth dates or their Social Security, so it makes uh, the diligent search harder. Um, I'm waiting to hear back. Sometimes I don't know how long it can take, but I've checked in with them and I still don't have any for any of the dads. On Nick, I did have a phone number for him, and then he changed phone numbers, and Vanessa and I both tried to call him when I was with Vanessa, and he had blocked us both. Um, the address that he gave me, the investigator went out to serve him, and the residents at the address said that he um, did not live there, and I have not had contact with any of the da alleged dads. Um, at this point, Vanessa has told me that all the contact that she has with them besides Nick is through Facebook, and she has given them all my number and told them that they need to call me, but I have not heard from any of them either. Thank you. That's all I had, Judge. All right, Mr. Hill. Nothing to report, Judge. And Ms. Sapien? Um, nothing to report either, Judge. Ms. Lucero. I don't have anything to report, Your Honor, but I would like to ask uh, Ms. Um, Novak, if besides the gentlemen that have already been mentioned, um, has Ms. Williams named anyone else possibly as the father? She is not to me. That's all I have, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Sabala. Oh, Judge, there was me. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Ms. <laughs> For Mr. Watkins, um, and I just wanted to ask if mom provided any information about where he might be like is he in the Amarillo area or anything like that anything that to go on what was his name ma'am I did I missed it Mike Watkins or Miles Watkins Miles Watkins sorry <laughs> my bad Miles Watkins I would be happy to ask her today and 
email the parties if you'd like to. Yeah, I would, I'd have to confirm. Um, I know it, she kind of knew the location of all of them and what state they were in, but that was it. Okay. If, if just by email, if you provide that information, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Nothing yes. further. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Zavala. Your Honor, Willow is doing very well. She's in the same placement she's been at um, since since the case began. Um, I do I do worry about the positive meth test. If if I'm reading everything correctly, then um, mom's actually higher for meth now than she was at the beginning of the case. She is lower than she was in February. Um, and it sounds like there's been zero progress and she's gonna have to start back over on everything. Um, so I, I am very concerned about that. I, I don't know that it's in Willow's best interest to have to do the driving all the way to Stanette and driving all the way back, especially if mom's not putting in the effort on this case. Um, so I, I do have concerns about, about the child bearing the burden of the transportation. All right, and I agree with that. Um, I think that we need to see some commitment and some progress for mom. Um, you know, if, if she's truly moved to Stanet to try to, you know, get away from the methamphetamine, that's, that's, you know, kudos to her for that. But, you know, she's been right here in Emerald. She could have been making some headway on these things and she's, whatever, whatever reason, has not. So um, I, I'm not going to make the child bear the brunt of that tra travel back and forth to Stanette. Mom's going to need to get here for visits. So, okay. Um, I'll continue the department as temporary managing conservator and I'll continue placement. And uh, we are set for a final on September 26th of 2023. And that's on a nine o'clock docket. So, um, the Daniel clock Travis, is winding the down. Department Department Department. Detective Services, we're present ready, Your Honor. Casey, on behalf of the oh, Kinder. Sorry, Casey. Sorry, Kinder. Go ahead, Kinder. Kinder Alho for the mother. I'm present ready. The mother is not present. Stacy Grant on behalf of Kendrick Ford. My client is not present, Your Honor. He is currently incarcerated, and um, our request for our request um, to the jail has not been answered, but I do know they have criminal proceedings on Tuesday that make it difficult for clients to call in. He's in Randall County uh, as of two days ago, but he's on a federal hold. Casey Zabala on behalf of Kinsley. All right. So let me ask Ms. Grant, I mean, without getting into the meet of what your discussions may or may not have been, but have you been able to talk with Mr. Ford? I mean, is there any agreement between Mr. Ford and the department or? I've talked to him one time, Judge. Um, I was not, a, I have not been able to speak to him since we got the proposed order to obtain a signature, specifically take it to him in person since I'm um, not in Randall County right now. Um, but Again, he's on a federal hold. The last we checked that that would be a transfer to federal custody. And so to the extent that his services can be completed while incarcerated, he can agree. And um, and then we'll have to see what happens after that based on what agreements might occur in his criminal matters. Okay, Ms. Ronho, have you had contact with Ms. Dustman? My office has attempted to contact her, but we have not been able to get a hold of her either. All right. Well, counsel, let me ask you this. This is the first setting on this adversary. Do you want to push this out seven days to give you guys a little bit more time? I could likely get a signature within seven days. To be honest, I don't think it'll change the circumstances for my client. She, as far as I know, is currently homeless. So I don't think the seven days would make much of a difference for me. <laughs> well, I, I guess, Ms. Grant, I mean, since we know your client is in custody, I mean, the, the issue is, you know, do you need that time to either either secure a signature from him or and or have 
him present for a hearing. And if it if we have to switch the day from a Tuesday to because of the jail stuff, mm-hmm. um, you know, to a Thursday or something, we could we could go ten days maybe or something like that. But I, I'm just trying to find out what you all want to do today. Um, I, mean, I, don't, Judge, I don't think there's any question that Ms. Desmond is aware of this. She she applied yes. for a court appointed attorney. She's you know, I mean, child. Was, and Judge, I don't I mean, think it. Cha- yeah, the only thing it would change is if um, Mr. Trout wanted the signature from my client. I could get it. Um, it's not going to change his circumstances in any way. It's not going to change his ability to do anything in any way. And the agreement probably would not change in any way. And to the extent that he and I can agree, we do agree. Um, and that is just, uh, and Mr. Trout understands that, you know, we may not be able to get any services if they pick him up from Randall County and move him somewhere where I can't get access to him. Okay. So what I'm hearing is it may not make that much difference. So probably not. All right. Well, then why don't we just go ahead and proceed today then? So, all right, Mr. Trout, you call first witness. We call Rodolfo Flores, John. And you were assigned the case from the beginning. That is correct. And how did the department become involved in the case with this child? The department received a report alleging that mom had uh, delivered the baby and both mom and baby were positive. Baby Kinsley were positive for methamphetamine. Okay. Um, after you received a report, were you able to go by the hospital or meet with the mother? Uh, yes, I was. And what is the mother's name? Mother's name is Julie Dustman. And you meet with her at the hospital? Yes. And how, what were your conversations like? Did she, um, you let her know what you were there for? Correct. I advised mom of all the, the department's concerns and why I was there. Okay. Did, uh, mother admit to you to any drug use during the pregnancy? She did. She con- she admitted that she was consistently using methamphetamine and the last time she had used was about five days before I met with her, which would have been two days prior to delivery. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> within, within that week, she had still been using. Correct. And baby was born uh, a little early. Correct, baby was born at 31 weeks. 31 to 33 weeks is what they calculated. Okay. Um, Baby, did baby have any troubles after birth due to uh, the positive test and early gestation? Um, baby needed a feeding tube, uh, was, but baby was on room air, so she didn't require oxygen. Uh, she did have a little bit of jitters. Okay. Um, does, does mother have prior history? Yes, mother has prior history with the department. Okay. And... She did she admit that she had um, had five children removed and had been adopted? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, did mother tell you who the father of the child was? She identified the father for Kinsley as Kendrick Ford. Okay. And where is Mr. Ford currently? Mr. Ford is incarcerated in the Randall County uh, Detention Center for some federal holds and you were were you able to speak to mr ford i was and so he he was aware of what was going on correct he identified himself as the father as well okay um did y'all discuss any um is mother did mother admit to taking any other or being prescribed any other medication for um anxiety, panic attacks, that sort of stuff? No, mother indicated that she had been diagnosed with some mental health uh, diagnosis and that she did require treatment, but she admitted that she was probably using methamphetamine uh, instead of whatever she was prescribed. She hadn't taken any medicine in, I think, three years. So she was, she was not compliant with the medication for that? Correct. Okay. Um, let's see. And mother admitted that during um, pregnancy, she, she had used every couple of weeks. Correct. Um, now, there's two other children that mother have that are with mother's sister. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and But we were not able to place with aunt at that time? Correct. And, and what was that due to? Uh, there was a 
there's a prior case with the aunt and then um there was also a concern that mom would probably reach out or not reach out but probably would go by the home and try to remove kinsley as well okay um was mom at one time possibly living with aunt correct that was the other issue okay um did Mr. Ford give any family members that could possibly be placed before the child? He he identified Nikki as well. He indicated his mother uh, would have been another possibility and, and grandmother. So grandmother to Kinsley and great grandmother were the people he identified. Okay. Um, but we weren't able to place with his mother at the time due to some background. Correct. The mother's the grandmother's background was was questionable, and great grandmother's age was uh, had a factor. I guess, played a factor in all places with her. Okay. Um, did mother, when you talked to her, did she give any other besides sister? Did she give any other names of possible placements in order to prevent a removal? No. Okay. Department tries to prevent removal if they can. Is that correct? Correct. But during this case, we were not able to find safe placements or supervising parties. Correct. Okay. Um, so was it determined then for um, the best interest of the child to remove the child in order to place and um, find safe living conditions for the baby? Correct. Um, have you been able to get in touch with mother since uh, the removal? No, I have not. Okay. Did um, did mother test for the department? She did not. Um, she only tested at the hospital? That is correct. Okay. Um, how is the baby doing now? Baby is doing good in care, uh, making her appointment, doctor appointments, follow-ups meeting some milestones. Okay. Um, and the department believed it was in the best interest to remove the child. Correct. And made efforts in order to prevent the removal. Correct. Is the department asking today for a temporary managing conservatorship of the child and for the parent to eventually work services? Yes. And in dad's situation, depending on if he is sent to sent off outside of Randall County, um, be able to work so what services he'd be allowed to. Correct. I'd pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Ronho. Mr. Flores, did the mother make any voices about wanting to work services for the department? She did. And when was the last time you had contact with her? Um, the day of the removal, which would have been July 5th. And was she made aware of this hearing today? Yes. And was she provided with the Zoom information to attend this hearing today? No, that the on July 5th, I did not have the Zoom information, no. Did you ever make any effort to provide her with the Zoom information? I, I texted her, so she had sent me a text message over the weekend indicating that her phone was now working. I tried calling her, she did not answer. So what I texted her was, uh, your information, her attorney's information and phone number so that she could reach out to you. I'll pass the witness. All right, Ms. Grant. Mr. Flores, um, do you anticipate any change in the father's status within the next 30 days? No. And when you spoke to him, did you and he both have the understanding that any services that he could work while incarcerated would be limited? Yes. And did he make any verbalization that he wanted any genetic testing done in this case? He did not. Did he sign the birth certificate? He was unable to. He was incarcerated. Okay. And so um, do you believe that any genetic testing might be required at any point? I, I would not know the answer to that. Okay. Um, and... The charges for which he's on federal hold could take some length of time to work out. Would you agree with me? Correct. Okay, pass the witness, Judge. And Ms. Zavala. 
have no questions, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Mr. Trout, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. Um, I would, if the court grants the TMC, um, it may be a good idea while he's in Randall County to see if we can get paternity testing, um, just to go ahead and get that fleshed out before he gets sent off if he is getting sent to federal. All right, and uh, Ms. Duranho, anything to present today? No, Your Honor. Okay, and Ms. Grant? Your Honor, um, I agree with um, Mr. Trout that we would probably go ahead and seek an order for genetic testing. However, I will approach that from two fronts and see if we um, can submit an acknowledgement as well. Um, but I would um, say that submitting a potential order to the court would probably be a good idea so that we're doubling our efforts to ensure that we don't lose track of him once he enters the federal system. It's much harder for me to reach clients. It's next to impossible for me to reach clients once they get into federal custody. I would agree. I think let's be on the safe side. We'll go ahead and order it. <clears throat> you know, um, so, All right, Ms. Zavala, any recommendation today? Yes, Your Honor. It is my recommendation um, that the department be named temporary managing conservator. Um, I do believe that's in her best interest. Um, she is doing very well in, in placement, and I do recommend that that placement continue. Let me, Amelia, ask, and I apologize. I'm, May have missed. Is is the child placed with the aunt that was interested? She is in, in foster care. Um, she is, however, placed with one of the adoptive siblings. Okay. I just knew that at time of removal we had an aunt that was interested in being placement. So. Okay, then I do find the evidence is sufficient to name the department as temporary managing conservator and find that there's an ongoing and continuing danger to the child's health, safety, and well-being if returned to the care of the mother uh, based on the fact that the mother is admitted to drug use, has tested positive for methamphetamine, and also is homeless uh, and reportedly uh, doesn't have an appropriate place or items for a baby. Uh, find that obviously the child cannot be returned to the care of the father since he's incarcerated and uh, is unable to care for the child. Let's go ahead and order the genetic testing between Mr. Ford and uh, the child, Kinsley, uh, just in that event. And then Ms. Grant, if he wants to sign an acknowledgement in between, you know, that's great, but at least we'll get that process moving along. And our status hearing will be August 29th of 2023. Daniel Trout for the Texas o'clock. Department of Family and Protective Services. Oh, we are present right here. Vince Nowak on behalf of Tiffany Anderson. She will not be attending today, Judge. I've had um, exactly three contacts with her. One was just prior to the adversary. The second was when she was in Potter County. And the third was uh, when she was in the Hilltop unit. She hadn't appeared at any hearings in in. Prior to her incarceration, the phone numbers I had were no longer operational. I did talk to her last week. We reviewed her anticipated testimony, and she indicated to me that she did not want to appear and testify today. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. Good morning, Lucero. On behalf of the father, Brandon Hill, Your Honor, I'm present and ready. I have not had any contact with Mr. Hill. Um, the address that I had at the beginning, uh, when I was appointed, I reached out to that address, sent letters, um, looked for him on social media, things like that, but was, was not was was unable to locate him, Your Honor. Stacey Zabala on behalf of the boys. And Casa is present with us today. Okay. Um, how many witnesses do you have today? Two, Your Honor. Mr. Nowak, Ms. Lucero, do you have any other witnesses to call today? No, Judge. No, Your Honor. All right. And Ms. Zavala, anybody to call? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then. You can call your first witness. We'd call Erica Smith, Your Honor. And can you tell me how you were ever familiar with that case? I worked there. I worked with the family during their family-based safety service case. Okay. <clears throat> and, and we'll start at that point. Um, you said there was a family-based case. How did the department become involved uh, with this family and this, these children? The department got involved due to Tiffany getting arrested 
because she was driving intoxicated with the boys in the vehicle. And that case was subsequently rejected. Is that correct? Did nothing came of that case? Yes. Okay. Um, and then I believe it was in March. Um, there was a family based assessment. Is that correct? Yes. And is that when you first began working with this family? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, how do those um, assessments for family based typically go? How do those work? Uh, typically, I go out with the investigator and I meet with the family and the kids and I do what's called a family safety needs assessment. It's just basically a, a lot of questions that go over past and future assessment questions that help us determine what kind of services will, that will help the family out. Okay. And during these assessments, do is this a time when parents would agree or not agree to work with family bus? Yes. Okay. And... Before I get going any further, what is the uh, the mother's name in this case? Tiffany Anderson. Okay. And during your um, assessment with Miss Anderson, did she agree to work with Family Base at that time? Yes, she did. And is Family Base Services is it is it one of its functions is to try to prevent removals and to work with the families before it gets to that point? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so after after Ms. Anderson agrees to work services, what are your next steps? The next step is to develop what's called a family plan. Okay. And it's basically the written agreement. And it states all of the services that the department feels will benefit the family. Um, and it it's just a formal paperwork that states what the what each service is and how to contact the services for the so the uh, family will have that paperwork in their hands okay and and that happened in this case yes it did okay and just kind of overview what type of services were we were you wanting uh, miss anderson to do the services that were recommended were individual counseling, drug education classes, the HOPES program, um, Texas Panhandle Centers for Tayshawn and Marquavian, and um, a couple of other things that we were encouraging were for Tiffany to look further into employment resources, due to the fact that she had discussed um, not being able to really make her bills with the employment that she was currently in and also encouraging her to continue Head Start with Jeremiah, her youngest son. Okay. And just go ahead and get this part out of the way now. Um, our case that we're currently talking about involves two children. Uh, you just mentioned a third, Jeremiah. Um, Jeremiah is not a part of this case. He is with his father. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, so he was he was never removed at the end of this. He was uh, had, his father has him. Yes. Um. Did you during this time? Did you meet with Miss Anderson at her home? I did. Okay. Um. Did you notice anything in the home that was concerning to you at the beginning? Yes, I noticed there was beer can in the kitchen okay and was that concerning because of the way this case got started or we first got involved with the family yes okay. um going forward how did miss um anderson react to working the services once she signed the plan was she open to working was she did she start out with her services how did that go she Yes and no. She did she did start her individual counseling. But as far as anything else, she did not get involved with anything else. Um did she kind of refuse to 
have the boys work any kind of services with the TPC or to talk to them? She did. Um, and through your investigation, was did you find that they had previously worked with TPC or was this brand new to them? They did previously work with TPC. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Was there concerns of um, maybe the children not attending school on a regular basis during this case? Yes, there were. Um, how did your, did you make weekly, bi-monthly, bi what type of visits were you making to the house during this time? Um, I was making two to three visits a month to the home. During your visits, um, routine visits to the home, did Miss Anderson's um, appearance and demeanor, did they change throughout the course of your working with her? Excuse me, this is... I apologize, Daniel, and Your Honor. This is not a rejection, but could could we get a time frame, please? Like during your visits, was it this past this removal, or was it the last case? Okay. Thank Thank you so much. During your during your FBSS case, um, once services were supposed to be started, you were making routine visits to the house. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, let's go with. Um, in April, when you met, so this is about a month after the FBS got started, um, did you make a visit to the home and mother said it would not be a good time to come in? I did. Okay. Uh, did she tell you why at that time that it was not be a good time to come in? She did not tell me why. She just, she opened the door just barely and just told me that it was not a good time for me to visit. Okay. Um, did you set up a time to come back on a later date? I did. Okay. And were you able to see her at that point? I did. Um, do not remember. Okay. That's all right. If you don't remember, you can just, just say you don't remember. Um, I don't remember. Okay. Um, now, it looks like around... April 25th, there was another intake that came in. Is that correct? Yes. And and what was that intake for? That intake was due to an unknown male being at Tiffany's home. Um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I miss I misspoken. Okay. Um, that intake was due to um stated that there was a male at Tiffany's home and she, the police were called to her home um, stating that this male, she, that she had no idea who this male was. But when the police got there, she, she did know who he was. And um, the police had called in an intake because of the way her mental health state was and because the youngest child was in the home. Okay. All right. Um, do you know where the two older children that are subject to this case were during that time? I do not. They just were not at the home when y'all got there or when y'all met with mom? They said they were not whenever I interviewed them. Okay. Um, and then I'm not sure if if the date is right on this, um, it says April 22nd. Did you and another investigator make a visit to the home? We did. Okay. And um, what happened during that visit? Due to um, Tiffany getting arrested, she she had actually she had gotten arrested and put in jail. And due to the boys being left alone, we had to discuss with the boys. Um, them having appropriate supervision while their mom was in jail. And they had given me a name of a cousin who would be able to come and stay with them while she was in jail. Okay. Um, and just to clarify on that, was she in jail or did she have, or did she go to the pavilion for a short stay? I'm, I'm sorry. She did. She went to the pavilion at that point. Um, April 28th. Um, did y'all meet with Tiffany at that time? We did. 
Um, was Tiffany open to meeting with y'all? She was not. Okay. Was she making any odd comments uh, that are comments that seemed odd to y'all at the time? She was. Um, she just was not making any sense at all. Um, she was making some some rude comments, some derogatory comments, some off the wall comments. Um, she was talking about the guy that was at her house, stating that he had broken into her house. And okay. um, she was saying that she had left her house. And when she left her house, that it was locked. And when she came back, it was unlocked. Um, just, just very odd comments. Um, during your meetings in April, were y'all attempting to find family members that could help um, watch the boys, take care of the boys, and to be um, either backup or um, providers for the kids? Yes, exhaustingly. And and so did the mother give you names and phone numbers of people to try to call? Or were these? Um, she gave me a couple, okay. but not many. Where did where did you get most of these names that you, of people that you were trying to exa exhausting list to try to contact? Um, most of them I had gotten from either off of looking them up on VineLink off the internet. Um, when I did find a relative online, I would call them and I would get more relatives from that relative. And um, whenever I would contact a cousin that was willing to help me out they would give me more names of other people to call um i i had a list of 20 different people that i called okay. um and then but at that time you would either get no phone calls back or be willing to be support but not take the kids in is that correct that's correct um now we you talked a little bit just a while ago that some of the comments that Tiffany was making at the time were um, didn't make a lot of sense to you. Um, you met again with her on May 2nd. <clears throat> um, yes. And but Tiffany was a lot more presentable and everything seemed to be OK at that time. Yes. Um, she, go ahead. Um, I was going to say that she had just got now the pavilion she she was on her medication that they had put her on in the pavilion she was doing what the doctors had told her she needed to do and she was completely put together okay. uh, she wasn't drinking and she was completely coherent knew all of her appointments knew exactly what she needed to do okay and did were you able to confirm that she was setting up future appointments with tpc Yes, I was. Um, and at that time, did did uh, Tiffany agree to drug screen for you? She did. And um, that came back as what? It came back as a dilute negative. Now, in you, you during this time over the next week or so, you continued to reach out, to, try to reach out to family members. Is that correct? Yes, I did. And. Um, in May, on May 10th, I believe you reached out to an Alma Anderson. Is that correct? Yes. And kind of the same thing. She'd be willing to help out, but could not take the boys in. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and through your investigation and meeting with talking to different family members, um, what, what was kind of the main reason of why nobody was willing to help and take in the boys at that time? Everybody basically said that this had been a continuous lifestyle of Tiffany's that she'd always been on again, off again, the on, on drugs, on drinking, that when her mother was alive, it was, it was still the same thing that her mother was really the one that took care of the boys. And her mother had actually passed away the Dece December before um we had opened the case and since her mother had passed away there just was nobody there to support the boys anymore and i don't remember if it was in your report did did tiffany ever mention to you that 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 was 
did she ever talk about her mother to you or did you just hear about this from other family members? I heard about it from other family members. All right. Um, but, but prior to all of this happening, as you just mentioned, uh, Tiffany's mother was kind of the one that watched over the kids and the, the boys stayed with, did she stay with them or did the boys stay with grandmother or did grandmother stay with the family? You know, the boys stayed with grandmother. It was actually grandma's house they were living in. Okay. Okay. And so this was still grandma's house that, that you're meeting at these with Tiffany? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> later in May, did you, um, or on May 10th also, did you <laughs> attempt to visit Tiffany at her house about her hair follicle test? I did. Okay. And was she home? Were you able to get in? No, home? she wasn't. No, she was not. Okay. May 11th, you met with another family member, kind of same story, um, would not be able to take the kids in? Yes. Okay. And when that was a, was that an uncle, a cousin? Um, I believe it was a cousin. Yes, a cousin. Um, and that kind of went through the same story as they gave you possible other family members that could be backups. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> now on May 12th, did you, were you able to meet with Tiffany Anderson at her, I believe at the home? Yes, I was. Okay. And how was Miss Anderson's demeanor at that time? She was disoriented and and definitely not coherent at that time. And so this was all, so this was on May 12th. And a while ago, you testified on May 2nd, she was well put together. Everything, conversations were easy. She was working on her um, TPC appointments. Is that correct? Yes. So within a span of about 10 days, she kind of went from doing well to demeanor completely changing. Is that correct? Yes. During your case, did you find out or did Miss um, Anderson ever tell you who the father was? Or did she you, did tell yes, she did tell me that Brandon Hill was there was Tayshawn and Marquavian's dad. Okay. And he the, he was not alleged. He he was a presumed father. He had been adjudicated as a father. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and that was in a prior case out of an it was yeah. a, out of another county, I do believe. I believe so. so okay. Um, during this, during any of this part, were you ever able to get in touch with uh, the father? I was not. Okay. And the very and, first day, I'm sorry. Um, the very first day that I met with her, whenever I did my assessment, he showed up at her home. And whenever he whenever she said, told him that CPS was there, he took off. Okay. Um, and again, I think you said a while ago, his name was what? Brandon you? Hill. Brandon Hill, okay. And throughout your FBSS case at the time, did you um, kind of make constant attempts to try to get in, find Mr. Hill or to get in touch with him? I did. Okay. On May 23rd, you, you met with um, Tiffany in the home again. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, what sort of statements was Tiffany making to you at that time? She was saying things, um, telling me that the kids were dead, that Jeremiah was living the... Jeremiah's dad took him away and kidnapped him. Um, that there was a man at the home that was leaving whenever me and the other coworker pulled up, and he was. She was telling us that he was pretending to be her husband, when in fact Brandon Hill was her husband. Um, just off the wall things. And do you happen to know who that person was, or was it just a random person who pulled up? He was uh he was just a random person. Um, I believe he had been hanging around there a couple of times, but I didn't know, didn't know who exactly who he was. Okay. Um did y'all call did you call in a um foreign assessment from with calling APD on this due to the behaviors mom was exhibiting? Yes, we did. And um, was she taken back to the pavilion for an evaluation at that time? Yes, she was. And then again on May 24th, 
same case went through numerous family members, checks that had run to see if you could find anybody to help out. Yes. And still to no avail. No. Yeah. Um, and you received on May 26th, did you receive a, a fax from uh, Texas Panhandle Centers? Yes, I did. And during that fax, did they give you um, a diagnosis of mom at the time? They did. Okay. And, and what was that diagnosis that was on that fax? She was diagnosed with acute psychosis. And it also stated how long mom had been receiving services from TPC. Yes, since 2015. Okay. On June 2nd, did you have another meeting um, with Tiffany? I did. And would she acknowledge you or cooperate in, in that conversation? She did not. Okay. Um, and this was your attempt to set up a family group conference, I believe it was? Yes, it was. And, and tell us exactly what a family group conference is. A family group conference is where we get the family members together along with supportive members of the family. And we meet at the CPS office with me, my supervisor, and a facilitator. And we go over the entire case and go over what needs to happen in order for the case to proceed. Okay. All right. Um, and Ms. Ms. Anderson was not cooperative that they did not want to speak to you. Is that correct? She did not. But you did provide the meeting date and time to her. I did, yes. Right. Um, and then on, looks like June 8th, um, you received a call from Tiffany about her job and needing to reschedule. Is that correct? Yes. Was this job, was it one that she had used to work and she got her job back? Or was this a new job she was getting? It's a job that she had previously worked at and she was getting back. Um, did you meet with... Um, Tiffany again on June 9th? Yes. And what was the condition of the home at that time in the yard? The, the home was a complete wreck. The yard was, there was debris everywhere. There was trash. There, all of her youngest son's toys were all outside and in the front yard, in the driveway. Um, it was, it was all just a mess. Like she had taken everything out of the house and put it out in the front yard. Outside of children's toys and that sort of stuff, did you notice any other concerning things in the yard? There were also multiple beer can, empty beer cans in the yard and up by the front door out, out in the yard okay. on uh, the, on the toys. And up to this point, so we're up to first week or so of June. Um, how was mom doing on working her services with family base at this point? She still had only done her counseling sessions. Okay. Um, had she set up any of the, of the other services or even set them up, just not attended, but had set up any other services? No, she hadn't. How were the, how were the boys doing at this time? They were... It, it, it was still the same. They were still doing the same thing, coming and going as they pleased. And do you know approximately kind of the age of the boys at this time? They were 12 and 14. Do you, do you, during your family-based part up to this point, um, young adolescent boys were, were just kind of coming and going from the house as they wanted with kind of no direction. Is that what you were seeing? Yes. Okay. You also notified Miss um, Anderson on that day that the family group conference had to be rescheduled till Monday, is the 13th. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay. And how did, did Miss Anderson show up on the 13th to the family group conference? She did. Okay. And how did, how did that meeting go? The meeting went well. She was 
once again, she was put together. She was coherent. Um, she knew exactly what she needed to do and what what she needed to say and and it it went well. Okay. And and during this part up to this point, um had I believe it was um uh, Markavian, had he gotten into some trouble at that time? He did. Okay. And um, we don't, let's not talk about what it was, but just that he had gotten into some sort of trouble. But nothing came of that. Is that correct? No. Okay. After the family uh, group conference, had um, did mom follow up with any of her TPC appointments or schedule? She did not. Did her Was her case eventually closed through TPC due to uh, noncompliance on that? It was. Okay. Um, and when that happens, what has to happen? What has to happen for mom to get reset up with that? Or can she has to go? She has to go through a whole new interviewing process. She has to do redo a new intake and do a new assessment and everything. Okay, let's move over to uh, toward the end of June, around June twenty seventh. Did you make another visit to the home to visit with Tiffany? Yes. And what was um, mother's demeanor and speech that time? She, um, she was doing good. She was coherent. Did she inform me that she had changed her dosage of her medication? She did. She said she wasn't taking as much as they had told her she needed to take. Okay, so so at that point, she admitted that she had changed her doses of medication without the doctor's approval? Yes. Okay. And did you advise her that she needed to speak to her doctor about that? I did. Did she okay. tell you that she would reach out to the doctor when she found the doctor's number? Yes. And did you offer to give her the doctor's number? I did. And did she refuse to take that number from you? She did. Did she make any concerning statements as, as as far as the child not involved with the case, Jeremiah, and her visitations with him on that day? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> sorry. And during that same visit, um, did she bring up her visitations with her other child, Jeremiah, the one that's not involved in this case? She said that she wasn't able to see him because his dad had blocked her number. Okay. Did she make a concerning statement about the dad possibly bringing a kid that was not actually Jeremiah? Yes. And what did she say after that? That he would he would bring a different Jeremiah to trap her. And then she laughed and said that she sounded crazy. Uh, did, did you find that concerning? I did. But up until that point, during that visit, she was coherent and speaking clearly. Do you, is that what you said earlier? She was. Okay. Yes. And then you made another visit later that afternoon to the house and Tiffany was not home? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, did she return to the home as you were leaving? She did. And she, where had she been? She had gone down to the family dollar down the street to get some groceries. And um, then on June 30th, did you receive a notification as regarding Tiffany? I did. Okay. And, and what was that notification? Um, that she had been arrested for public intoxication and drug paraphernalia. Okay. Um, and then it was what county was that in? That was in Randall County. Okay. Um, and were you able to meet with her at any time in Randall County? I was okay. on July 1st. Um, and then once she was released from Randall County, where did she go? I'm sorry, I misspoke. I was not able to meet with her in Randall County. Okay. Um, she she actually I actually called the jail and she was told that she was being transferred to Potter County. Okay. Um, and do you know what that was for? And um, she had outstanding warrants 
in Potter County. Okay. Um, Judge, I'd ask to admit exhibit number eight, I sent it out this morning. Um, it's a printout of a, the Randall County uh, website for their jails um, that shows the arrest that we were talking about. Thank right. you, Your Honor. Um, now, Ms. Smith, you said the, the, the Potter County case or the, the Randall County cases were um, for a public intox and a drug paraphernalia? Yes. And those offense dates were two days prior to your notification of that she was in jail. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and do you know when the actual uh, driving while intoxicated out of Potter County, do you know what that offense date was? When was your next chance to get to speak to um, the mother? On July 7th. Okay. And how was mother at that time? She was, she was well put together and coherent. Okay. Um, and what sort of conversation did you have with her that day? Did you speak about her appointments? <clears throat> yes, we did. And had she been able to reschedule any? She, yes. She said that she had rescheduled her appointments. I'm sorry. And that's okay. And when you, when we're discussing the appointments on this, is this for TPC or which appointments are these that we're talking about? Um, I believe this was for her her counseling appointment. Okay, so these were these were rescheduling sessions that you had mentioned earlier. She had worked on. Yes. Okay. Okay. And these are these are individual counseling. Yes. Okay. Um. But during that conversation, you she did not allow you in the home at that time. She would not. Okay. Did you receive um? messages from the boys at a later date i did and what was what was your impression of those messages when you received them worrisome okay and worrisome why i had i received a message telling me that a friend of Tiffany's had pulled a gun, telling them that they were going to. Your Honor, uh, object to hearsay. Your Honor, I, I think on yeah. as far as hearsay, it's a present sense impression from what she got and what was concerning to her in this, due to those messages. Well, I think, I mean, I'm not sure predicate's been laid. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure we know who the messages came from, the text message came from That's or fine. anything. So I'll, all I'm going to sustain is it's been objected to. Okay. I'll, I'll back up. Ms. Smith, did who did you receive messages from? I received a message from Tashawn. And Tashawn is one of the children involved in this case? Yes. And were these messages that you had reached out to him or were these unprompted messages that he sent you? It, it was a message he had sent to me unprompted. Okay. And do you know why he sent you those messages? Um, I I did it at first until he sent it to me. Okay. Um, and due to the nature of the case and some of the, you had mentioned earlier that um, the boys had kind of been um, kind of coming and going as they wanted to, and the mother's um, behaviors had changed from time to time, depending on visits. Um, did these messages prompt you to reach out to anybody else? I did reach out to the the youngest son's dad okay. who also confirmed these messages. Saying, confirmed them by saying he received the same type of messages? Yes. Okay. Um, did it prompt you to staff this case, the, this incident? Yes, it did. And what was determined at the staffing? Um, it was it was determined to reach out um, 
to the kiddo and to to make a new investigation, to, to call in a new intake and make a new investigation and to reach out to Tayshawn and find out what was going on and why he sent that message and to go to the home and talk to talk to Tiffany as well. What was the basis for that intake? I'm sorry, say that again. What was the the messages, but what was the reasoning for the intake? What would y'all were y'all investigating and looking into? Because it was stated that there was a gun involved. Okay. Were you able to visit the home and talk to the mother at this point? We did visit the home, but we were not able to talk to Tiffany. Okay. Was she at home? She was not. Okay. Um, were the boys willing to speak to you at this time? They were not. Okay. Did they seem to kind of avoid you at this time? Yes, they did. Okay. On July 12th, um, were you able to speak to the boys? Yes. Okay. Were you, was it to Sean again? Yes. Um, did he tell you when the last time he had seen his mother? He said, I do not recall. Um, and can I can I call your attention to I believe you got four different four different paragraphs. Yes. Let's start with July 12th. The very last one. Uh, OK. Were you able to contact Deshaun by phone? Since the night before. Okay. Yes. So, so it had been a night or two since he had seen his mother. Yes. Okay. What was your next step after that? <clears throat> The our next step was to um, staff the case with my program director and my supervisor. Okay, and what was determined at that staffing? It was determined to go ahead and send an email to legal for to staff her for removal of the boys. Okay, um, and then on um, July thirteenth. Were you notified that Tiffany was a no-show for a court hearing? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, later that day, did you make a visit to the home? I did. And were you able to meet with Tiffany? I, she, yes, I was. How was her demeanor that day? She was, she was jittery and was not able to stand and talk very well. But but she was coherent. Okay. And when you say not being able to stand, do you mean pacing or not being able to stand? She she was pacing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, did y'all ask, did you ask her about um, if she was using again? We did. And did she deny it? She did. Okay. Um, did you ask if she would do an oral exam, oral drug screen? Yes. And she refused that? She did. Um, but she did agree that she would uh, do a UA screen drug screen for you. Is that correct? Yes. Did you ask her about the incident involving the alleged gun that Tashawn had reached out about? I did. And, and what was her reaction to that? Um, at, no, at first, she said that, that, that it wasn't true, that that never happened. But then she said that it was just a toy gun that the gun was not real. Okay. Um, in fact, said it was a BB gun. Yes. Okay. Um, but at that point, she wasn't denying that something happened and a gun was pulled out that night. Yes. Okay. Um, now, did mom end up submitting to that UA on July 14th? She did not. Okay. Um, and then again, on July 15th, did you attempt to contact dad or to find dad? Yes, I did. Okay. And um, were you able to make contact with anybody at that home or to contact anybody that possibly knew where dad was? I was able to speak to a lady that is, that was his ex, another mother to some of his other children. Yeah. Um, 
in, who she said that she was unaware of his whereabouts and that he was no longer staying at that address. Okay. Did uh, Were you able to get any other kind of contact information for him? No, she said that she would call me back and give me a number, but she I never heard back from her. Um, and then on July 20th, were you able to make contact with Tiffany again? Yes, I was. And where were you able to make contact there at that time? He was at her neighbor's house. Okay. And what was Tiffany's demeanor then? She was very erratic. Um, She was, she was hiding from us. She. She was. She was disoriented, but, but then again, she wasn't. Did, did mom recognize you? She did. Okay. Um. Did she say that she was not going to talk to you? She did. Um, was there statements made that she didn't know what CPS was or why they were wanting to talk to her? At first, yes. Okay. Um, so she after. So this has been going on since March. And we're now into July and you've been in constant contact with mom. Multiple times throughout the past three or four months. Yes. And now she's saying that she doesn't know what CPS is or why y'all are speaking to her about her voice. Yes. Was that concerning to you due to the the nature of the mental health going on throughout this case? Yes. Did that prompt you to um, call in another uh, report to APD due to her mental health status at that time? Yes. And did APD come? They did. Was mom found to have a, a warrant at that time? She was. Okay. And so mom was mom arrested and taken to jail? Yes. At that time, was the decision made to remove the children due to no supervising parties, uh, due to mom being in jail, not being able to find dad, and no family members willing to take the kids? Yes. Did you, on July 20th, did you go by the house to um, pick up the boys for the removal? Yes. And what happened at that point? I uh, my, I and my coworker explained to them what was going on mm-hmm. and told them that we were going to have to take them with us to the office. And um, they ran. Did you have to file a, um, a runaway report, I guess is what it is at that time? Yes. Does mom have any prior CPS history or prior criminal history involving um, the boys? Yes, she does. And did, to your knowledge, did mom have a um, prior conviction for abandoning or endangering a child? Yes. And um, that involved one of the children involved in this case, correct? Yes. Judge, I'd also ask to go ahead and admit exhibit number one, um, which is the indictment and the judgment um, also includes motion to revoke from the case, the prior case of the abandoning, endangering the child of criminal negligence. Um, There are certified copies. All right. And just exhibit one. Yes, ma'am. And and since it was all the same case, I put it all under one, Your Honor. It's the. It's the indictment, the judgment when she was placed on probation, the two uh, motion to revokes, and then the final sentencing. Okay. All right, then petitioner's exhibit one will be admitted. So, Ms. Smith, after the boys ran uh, and you had to file a report, um, what was what was y'all's next step at that point? Um, at that point, the case was pretty much sent over to St. Francis. Um, Well, we 
we got the special investigators involved due to the boys running because we we had to find them. They couldn't just be left out on the streets. And were y'all able to find them? Um, not for quite a while. Okay. And for what do you mean by for quite a while? Like, do you remember how long it was? It was. On July 22nd, I had gotten word that that one of them was, I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know how much I can say. L let me ask you this. Um, on July 22nd, were the boys picked up? Yes. Okay. And while en route to St. Francis, what happened? And they jumped out of my car and ran. Okay. So after they were found, um, a few days after the removal was approved, um, they ran again. Yes. Okay. The day before that, on July 21st, did you meet with Tiffany while she was in Potter County Jail? Yes. Okay. And you informed her that um, the boys had been removed? Yes, I did. Did she explain understanding why was why this was happening? She she did not understand. And and was it a she didn't understand why her personal mental health issues were leading to this at the time? Yes. Did she understand that due to her being incarcerated and no safe placement for the boys is also why it happened? Um, somewhat. Did you ask if she had any contact with the boys to please let them know? To please let you know. I'm sorry. I did. How did she respond to that? She she basically said that um, that it would it wouldn't matter if she knew where the boys were at or not. That I I would never find them. Do you know around about the time that Miss um, Anderson was released from Potter County Jail? I do not recall. So, um. Let me ask it this way. On August 1st, did you check jail rosters in Potter and Randall County? I did. And was she in either one of the jails? She was not. Now, you worked with Ms. Anderson for, from March until essentially August 1st at this time. Yes. You worked with her extensively to try to prevent removal and to uh, help out the family. Yes. Due to a couple of different incarcerations throughout the case. Um, mom's mental health and not addressing it and no safe placement for the boys um, it was determined to remove the children is that correct yes and you believe that's in the best interest um, of the children at the time to try to get them safe placement yes and so y'all we went through the legal channels to remove the children and during the removal the boys have run and at this point um, y'all have not been able to keep them in let me rephrase that you found them and they ran again and so at this point you're still looking for the for the boys is that correct i am not sure at this point but when you last spoke to or uh, checked the jail rosters on august 1st the boys were still not found um correct okay your, Your Honor, I hate to ask, but can I get just a one minute break? Literally like one one to two minutes. You know, my flight got in late last night. My luggage did not. So I'm working from home this morning, waiting on it. And uh, turns out my two dogs had the, the delivery guy cornered. So <laughs> apologize for that delay. I, I sure do apologize. All right, we can resume. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, one last question. And I think I asked it. I just want to make sure that I had it on record. Um, the department sought the removal for the best interest of the ch kids, children, Tashawn and Mark Wavian, um, due to the way this case has progressed um, up to this point. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness, Sharon. Did, 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 did you have any involvement? I mean, good afternoon. My bad. Um, did you have any involvement with uh, the family plan or the provision of services past, uh, past removal of the children? No, I did not. It's the only question I have, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Okay. 
Ms. Lucero? Um, just a couple of questions. Um, Ms. Smith, in your uh, investigative report on uh, May, the, the paragraph entitled May 23rd, 2022, you stated there was a man present when the workers got to the home and she, and I'm assuming uh, that's the mother, told the workers that he was pretending to be her husband, Brandon Hill. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And earlier in your testimony, you stated that, uh, I guess, a gentleman arrived there at the home while you were uh, visiting with the mother. And um, you stated that she had told that guy, hey, it's CPS, and he took off running, right? Yes. Okay. But, and at that point, uh, you don't know whether or not that was actually Brandon Hill, do you? I do not. Okay. Because uh, if, if I'm correct, if I heard your testimony correctly, you never actually yourself uh, had a chance to meet with Mr. Hill or tell him that the kids were going to be removed or anything like that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Okay. And Ms. Bala? Um, you've mentioned several times throughout the investigation that you had to try to reach out to family members. Did you reach out to any of Brendan Hill's family members? I did try, yes. Um, were you able to get them information about what was going on and why there was a need for family to be involved? I do not. I do not believe I was able to get in contact with any of his family members. I know I sent several letters to his family members and I never got replies back. Okay, I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Trout, anything further of this witness? Nothing further from Ms. Smith, yeah. All right, counsel, any uh, objection to Ms. Smith being released at this time? Your Honor, I no, just have a couple of questions. Okay, Ms. Lucero, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, just a couple of questions to follow up. Um, Ms. Smith, um, you said you weren't able to get into uh, in contact with any of Mr. Hill's family members, is that correct? Correct. And who, who provided that... Uh, those family members' names or contact information to you? Most of the contacts I was able to get either off of VineLink, which is off the internet. And if I was able to find a family member through there, um, they were able to connect me with other family members. Now with Mr. Hill's family, um, most of his came off of the internet and I was either able to get phone numbers, which were called and were not connected with anybody, or, um, I got addresses, which letters were sent out. Okay. Were any of those letters ever returned to you or do you recall? No, they weren't. Okay. And, um, during your, um, whenever, and you met various times with Ms. Uh, Anderson, um, were you able, able able to determine whether or not Mr. Hill had an ongoing relationship with these boys? Um, he did not. Okay. Matter of fact, talking to the boys, they did not even know him. He they never had a relationship with him growing up. Okay, I'll pass the witness. Okay. Anybody else have any further questions for Ms. Smith? No, Judge. No, Your Honor. One, one quick one, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Smith, as far as Mr. Hill, the only person you were able to get in touch with um, that's connected to him outside of Ms. Anderson and the boys was um, a lady that was mother of his other children. Is that correct? That's correct. And she never called you back to give you any contact information that she was going to do? Correct. Nothing further, Your Honor. Y'all, Jalissa Bird. And, as, and you're familiar with the Hill case by being a pharmacy specialist, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, when you got the case, what was your, what was the first thing you did with this case when you got it? Um, I planned to schedule to meet with a parent because uh, I was told that she was in jail. Um, so planned to meet with parent that she was released. Um, I would say, I think it was just that day that I was looking into visiting with her. She was already released. Um, both boys at the time were still on the run at that time. Okay. Um, were both boys later picked up and, and brought into care? Yes. Okay. Um, and they have been in care ever since? Yes. Okay. Um, during your 
when you work a case, do you do family plans of service? Yes. And tell us what family plans or service are real quick. Um, it's an outline of um, services for parents and, and overall uh, look on the family and the plan for the family. Okay. And that's for services to work um, in order to hopefully be reunited. Yes. Okay. Um, now you said you went to meet with Ms. Anderson at the jail, but she had been released. Uh, were you able to meet with her at a later date? No, I uh, did searches. I stopped by her home a few times with CASA, um, but no, I was not able to meet with Ms. Anderson. Okay. Um, but you did generate um, family plans of service? Yes. And Judge, I'd ask to admit exhibit number three, um, which is the family plan of service for uh, Tiffany Anderson. And I'd, I'd go ahead and ask to admit exhibit number seven, which is the family plan of service for Brandon Hill. No objection. Now, Ms. Bird, were the um, family plans of service made in order of the court? Yes. And, but you, during this case, were you ever able to find mother or father? No, not at the beginning of the case. Okay. Uh, at this point, have you ever been able to find the father? No. Okay. Um, when did you find Miss uh, Anderson? Um, just doing the um, checks for the uh, county jails, and I seen that uh, Tiffany Anderson was at Potter County Jail in March of this year. Okay. And were you able to go meet with her? Yes. And did she seem aware of the case that had been going on? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, in fact, she she actually was served with the case. Um, yes. Okay. Um, and judge, I'd ask the court that the court take judicial notice that mom Tiffany Anderson was personally served on July twenty sixth, the twenty twenty. And what did mom say as far as services? Um, now the the family plans of service had been made a court order quite quite a while back and. Um, yes, we went over the family plan. We discussed it. Um, I would look into, I let her know that I'd look into the jails. Um, I guess if she would be able to work services while she's in, um, in jail. Um, so we discussed that. She did say she would work services, um, but she believed she was going to be uh, sent to TDCJ. And Your Honor, I'd ask to admit um, exhibits uh, four, five, and six, which is um, the indictment um, that Ms. Anderson is in jail for, um, her judgment, and exhibit six is the uh, inmate details from the TDCJ website. No objection to any of those exhibits, Judge. No objection. No objection. Our petitioners four, five, and six will be admitted. Thank you, Honor. Uh, Ms. Bird, Ms. Anderson is in TDCJ and she's not eligible for any type of parole until um, our projected release dates 2024. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and possible max sentence date is until 2026. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, during the course of this case, has Ms. Anderson um, worked any services? No. Has Mr. Hill worked any services? Has no. either one of the parents had any visitations with the kids? No. Um, have has the department made attempts to work with the family to try to reach reunification? Yes. To the best of your ability and what you can find. Yes. Um, but the kids have been in care for longer than six months. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you believe that e either one of the parents can provide a safe environment or living situation for the children? No, not at this time. Is that based on mom being in prison and uh, not being able to find dad throughout the life of this case? That's correct. Thank you. Miss um, Bird, at this time, is the department asking um, for termination of the parental rights um, of Tiffany Anderson based on failure to work services and based on uh, constructive abandonment at this time? Yes. And as to the dad, Brandon Hill, is the department also asking for Termination of the parental rights based off of failure to work services and um, constructive abandonment also. Yes. And do you believe that's in the best interest of the children in order to give them a stable environment? Yes. Um, how are the children doing now? 
Uh, they're doing well. Um, they're both in uh, foster home placements or GROs, um, and they're doing well in contact with each other. Um, so they're, they're doing really well, uh, planning to attend school um, in the fall. Okay. So the boys, they don't have any contact with any family, but they have contact with each other. That's correct. Okay. And that's through cell phones, phone calls, computers. Yes. Okay. And the department does believe that this is in the best interest of the children to terminate the parental rights. That's correct. I'll pass the witness, Yaron. Good afternoon, Ms. Bird. Good afternoon. Is it your testimony, ma'am, that, that an incarcerated individual cannot work any services? Depending on the facility, um, generally, no. When, when we had our last hearing on May 9th of 23, I believe Tiffany Anderson was in Potter County. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. What services could she have worked in Potter County? Um, they told us that we could send in paperwork. Um, I know that we provided like a stress index to parent, um, but basically you could just send her papers and she could look at them. That was the extent. So the services that we require um, would need to be participation in those services. So in other words, most of it, what was in the family plan could not be completed while, a per while Tiffany was incarcerated. That's correct. And I, 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 I was going to write it down, but I, I missed that. What paperwork did you sell, send to Tiffany while she was in Potter County? Um, it was the stress index um, uh, form. It's uh, submitted to parents at the beginning of our cases to kind of evaluate how parents doing dealing with stress and um, just with the case. And But we did not receive it back. Other than when she was incarcerated, did you have any contact with Tiffany Anderson? No. How many times did you go out to the Potter County Jail to visit with Tiffany Anderson? I believe three different occasions. And what were the, what was the purpose of those three visits? Um, to update her on the case, um, her children, um, and just uh, parent well-being and overall um, contact. And she was moved to Hilltop, I believe, shortly thereafter, correct? That's correct. Do you, you know what services that she could have completed in Hilltop? Uh, no, I reached out, but I didn't get a lot of information. Um, so no, I don't. Who did you reach out to? Uh, the Hilltop, um, I guess the general line. Um, and they provided me an email to contact. And that was as much contact as I had. With Hilltop. Did, did, did you send an email? Uh, no, not, not yet. Not at this time. How come? Um, just kind of working other areas. Um, I know I've spoke with CASA. Um, so we were just trying to figure out a way to get in contact with mom. But, but without contact from the department while she's at Hilltop, there's very little she can do towards her service plan, correct? Um, that's correct. Judge, that's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Birch, she didn't work any services prior to being incarcerated, did she? No, she did not. All right. <clears throat> That was a question I didn't want to ask. <laughs> Thank you. I think it was already fairly clear, but I just wanted to ask. All right. Uh, Ms. Lucero, any questions? Just a couple, Your Honor. Um, as far as uh, Mr. Hill, um, during, you said that during the life of this case, that you took it over, you had no contact with him. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And uh, were you able to, you yourself, find any family members that would be willing to be placement for these boys? Um, no, not at this time. I've made a few contacts with cousins, a nephew, um, an aunt of the grandmother, um, but all ended up not being able to take the boys in. Were they willing to take the boys or, or just unable to take the boys? Um, not willing to take the boys in. I understand. Okay. And, and as far as the service plan, it was made an order of the court, but since you never met with Mr. Hill, you never went over that service plan with him, correct? No, I was not able to. I'll pass the witness, Sean. All right. And Ms. Saval. Ms. Bird, at any time prior to mom's incarceration, did she reach out to have contact with the boys? Um, she mentioned she would like to have a phone call with the boys. Um, I know Mark Quavian stated he did not want contact. Um, Tayshawn stated he would possibly want contact. Um, but then mother was um, moved to another facility. But prior to her being in, in Potter County, even in jail, did she reach out when she was, before she was incarcerated? 
No. Um, did dad ever reach out to you for contact with the boys? No. I passed away. One, sure. one quick, one quick follow up. And I, I think this is our. Well, hang on. It goes back to him first. Mr. I'm sorry. I, I, um, no question. No. I think that. Okay, Mr. Noah. Thanks. And, and Ms. Bird, I, I think this was made clear earlier, but you did go over the family plan of service with Tiffany Anderson, correct? That's correct. And I think I think that it was docu signed or e signed, correct? Um, it was signed in person. Okay. With any question in your mind that she knew the services she was required to complete? Yes, she did know. Yes. Okay. Thank thank you and thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Ms. Bird? No questions, Your Honor. No questions. No questions. All right. Mr. Trout, any other witnesses? No further witnesses, Your Honor. Department rest? Department rest. All right, Mr. Novak, any witnesses to call today? No, Your Honor. Uh, rest. Ms. Lacero. No witnesses, Your Honor. I rest. All right. Ms. Zavala, any witnesses to call? No witnesses, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Zavala, do you have a recommendation to make today? I do, Your Honor. I do believe it's in the best interest of both boys for the parental rights for both parents to be terminated at this time. Um, I've been able to visit regularly with both boys. They're doing well. Um, they're having contact with each other. We're exploring some placement options. Um, I do recommend that that currently their placement continue um, until we can can potentially find something else. But they are both doing well. I do believe termination would be in in their best interest. All right, and Casa. Yes, Your Honor. And do you have a recommendation to make? I agree with the recommendation that the. Parental rights should be terminated in the best interest of the children. Thank you. Are we looking for placement to get for the boys together? <clears throat> we we are. Um, we've got one um, family friend that we're exploring um, and need need some more information on whether to even start a home study. And then we're in contact with both placements for the boys to determine if maybe we want to move one or the other to that placement. Um, I know Ms. Bird's working on all of that and the placements are working well together. All right then, uh, everybody rest and close? Rest and close, yeah. Close. Yes, close. All right, at this time, then I do find by clear and convincing evidence it is in the best interest of the children to terminate the parental rights between the children and their mother, Tiffany Anderson, also their father, Brandon Hill, uh, based on Texas Family Code, section 161001, subsection B1, the N and the O grounds as to each parent, and the best interest under Texas Family Code, 161001, subsection B2. Uh, at this time, I will name the department as permanent managing conservator of both children and will continue their current placements. And we will dismiss all court appointed attorneys from the case after the de novo and appellate time frames expire, with the exception of Ms. Zavala, who will remain as the children's attorney and guardian ad litem. Uh, Casa, do you wish to remain in the case at this time? And Casa will also remain in the case. Uh, for those of you still involved, our first review hearing will be October 12th of 2023. That'll be on a nine o'clock docket. Uh, Council. Uh, as always, uh, be advised, your de novo time frame does begin to run since I've rendered an open court. And also, please do not file any notice of appeal if you're instructed to do so until uh, a final order has been signed and adopted by the referring court.